the the catalyst for India, uh, at least last time it had a phenomenal bull market, was that India is going to be the next China. And I think that story is largely deflated, right? I, I think, you know, there's some attempt in manufacturing in, in India, and that hasn't been super successful. Uh, and uh, and I think the more people study the ecosystem, the more people study, you know, the chips ecosystem, right? India's not ready to replace China. India's not ready to replace, you know, Taiwan or South Korea. Uh, it's just a very different ecosystem with its own set of problems. So I think once that catalyst that India is going to be the next China has deflated, there's not a new story that, that captures the market's imagination. If you look at domestic consumption, it is still too small of the economy, too weak of the economy. And in fact, uh, AI may actually pose a far larger risk to India than AI is as a tailwind to a lot of Asia hardware maker because you know India is probably the most likely to be replaced by AI given so much of India has been call center right and then now mm. with AI you almost don't need a call center anymore. Yeah, you need a chatbot. That's about it, right? So listen, uh, on China, you see a bull market, uh, a quiet bull market happening there. But one of the problems uh, that they're facing, and we're going to be talking more about it later on in the show, is this whole idea of, of involution, which is a weird word, but it basically means China is going through literally their version of economic hunger games, uh, right? Doesn't that give you pause? Absolutely, right? When you When you think about China, right, I mean, you think about their biggest risk as uh, overcapacity. And that overcapacity has come from just it, the insane, intense competition. If there's an opportunity to make a profit, all of a sudden it draws in too much sort of uh, speculative capital. It creates too much capacity, and all of a sudden profit disappears for everyone involved, and there's overcapacity. And that is really what China means when it says involution. Now, the government has stepped in, right? I mean, I think this is where uh, economics theory says without a coordination mechanism, and in this case, the government, without the government stepping in and finding a way to discourage this kind of insane, intense, unhealthy competition, uh, China can't get out of this death spiral. And, uh, and, you know, Beijing has been pushing, and I think that's, that's, that's been part of what's fueling the, 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 the sleeper uh, bull market. Again, exactly how this will play out, how big of an effect, we don't know yet. But the fact that Beijing has taken note of that and has been at least now cheap talk, but talk is at least acknowledgement, right, that yeah. the economy must move away from involution, from sort of unhealthy, intense competition. Uh, so hopefully uh, some policy can come forth and they begin to solve that problem because that's the All only right, way I mean, to they... get out of the overcapacity cycle. Yeah, I mean, they, they, they want competition, right? They don't want it to, to end up crushing the economy and crushing people. So uh, we, have to, we have to note uh, that. What, what does involution, this whole idea, mean for AI and AI compute in China? Because, you know, the, uh, the most, uh, I guess, the low-hanging fruit for most investors would be, look, the platforms, right? The AI, whatever it is they do, and their products or they're more likely their services are just going to get cheaper, right? But is that, is that what... Is that what China needs or even wants? Because, I mean, deflation has been an issue in China for, for several months now. And, you know, even with prices going lower and lower, it doesn't seem to be doing much or enough for consumption in the country. Yeah, Martin, you got it exactly right, right? Like the worst possible thing is with AI creating such enormous productivity, instead of the firms keeping more margin, therefore being able to pay their employees better and therefore create a positive cycle that leads to more consumption if firms simply being more productive lay off employees give much of that margin as price cut and that actually scares the economy because it looks like deflation and it also looks like great unemployment right so again china needs a coordination mechanism to encourage firms to actually keep that margin instead of passing all of that through as lower prices and historically, um, Chinese firms have competed in a way such that any increase in productivity becomes lower prices and becomes deflation. Uh, so we'll see if, Martin, like you say, in the case of AI, uh, could China get out of that involution debt cycle? Mm, do you think it would be something that's similar uh, to 2015? supply side reform uh, that led to you know this very meaningful uh, production cuts or is it something of a political rhetoric that's brewing out of a china so sherry you know i think 
it 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 is going to have to be some kind of supply side reform like you say without a supply side reform uh you're going to have productivity leading to again overcapacity that just doesn't solve any problem right and for now you know beijing it started off with the rhetoric of saying like this is not healthy um they they they're going to put forth policy to discourage that they're telling firms to 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 sort of think about their own pricing strategy um uh, but you know i think um beijing recognizes that it has to step forward with some kind of policy as a coordination mechanism because i think the free economy left to its own devices will get back again to the same a negative spiral that it has always done which is any increase in productivity does not translate into margin but translates into deflation